Welcome to Jimbo's Garage. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Jimbo's Garage. Well, I got a good one for you here today. I've been working on this project here in town with a contractor by the name of Built by Newkirk. And we're down to the very end of this project, and one of the last things we're doing is an outdoor barbecue kitchen area. Now, he provides a uh, 3D full dimensional drawing for this particular project, and I gotta say, it's extremely easy to work with. What we have here is some five inch square tube uh, columns, basically, column structures, I should say, and the trellis part is gonna be inch and a half by three inch rectangular tubing. Now, I've already built two of these columns, I gotta say, it was a pretty interesting build. So I'd like to bring you guys along for the very last column on this and show you how I did it. Let's get started on today's project. All right, well, I gotta say, first of all, that this was a huge project for me in the shop. These things were extremely heavy duty and extremely heavy. Uh, my guess, probably about 400 pounds each, and it was uh, difficult for me to get these things around, but hey, managed to get it done. First thing I did is get the uh, square tubes that I needed up on my welding table right here. And then I had to cut some angles. There was a lot of angles. The plans called out for uh, angles and they had all the degrees included. And I didn't have an angle finder. And I found this particular thing on Amazon, angle finder. It was about, I don't know, I want to say 20 or 30 bucks. It's pretty inexpensive. I bought two of them. This is the bigger one. And I got a smaller one as well. Uh, worked out really good. So I'm here, you're here, I'm using the uh, HDP uh, Microcut 875SC right here, handheld plasma cutter uh, for cutting all the angles out right here. And I'm telling you, you know, I don't know what, I don't know how I would have done this before, but uh, man, uh, these plasma cutters are really make things a lot easier. You can see that I was just working my way around the tube right here. And I actually had three sides to cut off. You can see it's a pretty clean cut. So there really wasn't much to it after that. Just uh, break out uh, my flap disc right here and just knock off some of the dross and uh, do some minor grinding. And, and that is it. It's uh, perfectly flat. So I had to do both ends and uh, one of the other sides as well. So there's just a lot of cutting right here. But uh, managed to get uh, what I needed to get done. Just checking the angle. 102 degrees. Perfect. Got everything cranked, cranked down, and once I knew everything was going to work, uh, before I welded uh, that section to the other section, I had to get this flat plate welded onto the bottom of this one. Now, this is the flat plate that is going to be actually mounted to the concrete footings. It's already been uh, poured in the ground. I did that uh, about a month or so ago. You can see I'm just using these fab squares right here from weldtables.com. Clamped everything in, got everything perfectly square, perfectly flat, just double checking and uh, it was no problems there. So the first thing I'm going to do is fire up the HTP Pro Pulse 200 and I'm going to be doing the the first pass around here is going to be um, MIG welding. I'm just tacking all four corners right here and then I am uh, going to be MIG welding the first pass around. They're going to be capping it with some dual shield flux core. Now I get a lot of guys ask me what settings I was using. Well, this particular uh, settings were right at about 375 inches a minute and about uh, 21 volts right here. And uh, we're just going through here. Uh, it's 35 thousandths wire. And there's some of the welds right there. You know, everything worked out really good. This is the first pass all the way around. And then we're going to go ahead and cap it with the uh, dual shield flux cord. And for that, I'm going to fire up the HTP Pro Pulse 300. And here's my settings right here, 440 inches a minute. And I'm going to tune down uh, to about 26.7 volts right there. And that should be enough to make this happen. And I'm just going around uh, all four corners right here and putting the cap pack pass on here. You can just see how that uh, slag chips right off of there with, with no problems. I'm just finishing it up right here. You see a lot of smoke coming off right there. I've got my doors and windows open for ventilation. Uh, worked out uh, pretty good for that. It just, uh, you know, I create like a vacuum type of deal. With the garage door open and the door in the back, it just makes a vacuum. and just sucks the uh, fumes and, and everything right out, the, right out the door. All right, so here it is. I'm uh, double checking everything here. I'm going to shut the uh, 300 off, turn the 200 back on. Crank everything down, double check everything, uh, you know, the angle's right, again, perfect, right on the money, and I just put a level on there just to double check everything, and 
You know, with this new welding table, everything is perfectly level, perfectly flat. I've never had any issues with it. And uh, it makes for fabricating, you know, a breeze and a charm to work with right here. Here it is, a first pass uh, around right here. Now, I've got, uh, I'm, you can see I've just done three sides right here. And I do ultimately have to flip it over to get the other side. And, of course, I can't be doing that. My guys, you got to help me do that. But uh, we're at least going to get this part of it done on this side for now. And you can see I needed to hit 97 degrees with this angle right here. And uh, there it is. I got it. And I'm just using my silver pencil right here. Those things work out pretty good. I get them on Amazon. A lot of guys ask me, why is that orange tape around your pencil? Well, I got a bad habit. And then I put pencil. I put those pencils in my mouth all the time. And uh, the, that is just painter's tape that I wrap around the end. Because if I don't, I end up getting wood chips in my mouth and chew the things off. So... That's the, that's why I have the orange tape around there. You can just see, I'm just uh, cutting this off again. Now a quick little uh, whack with the flap disc right here. And I'm ready to put the third piece of this uh, column structure together. Now the big, the biggest thing is coming up is this really big angle right here. Uh, you know, I, it, it was kind of a guessing game because I didn't have a degree on this. I had certain points I had to hit. And so it was, uh, you know, I did ultimately get through there but i gotta say i had to do a little bit more grinding and a little bit more custom cutting to make them fit perfectly this one actually worked pretty good the last one of course uh and you'll see that uh, fit up here in just a minute but uh, again you can see right there in that left hand corner i had a little bit of an overcut right there but yet really nothing that will's not going to take care of and just hit this with the uh, flap disc and uh, knock the dross off let me get all this stuff out of the way for you right here and i'll show you how this thing just fits right in and just like that pretty good fit there's a little bit of a gap there right there but there's nothing wrong with that because the weld's going to fill that in and that's going to work out pretty good all right so i'm just going to tack these in all four sides right here and uh, i'm going to jump to the other side after i get this tacked and get uh, that one tacked as well then we'll get this thing finished up again everything's nice and flat and worked out really good all right, here we go. You know, I, I got to say, I found the, the the settings just happen to be right on. At least they are for me. Every machine might be different, but uh, boy, everything's flowed so smooth. Right inches, obviously, a uh, square plate that uh, eighth of an inch thick. And I cut those out and then I'm welded all the way around. And then I'm just grinding them flush and rounding the edges to make it look like it's just a solid, uh, a solid uh, structure. A really clean finish, really clean look. You'll be see later on in the video, I'll be doing that with the, uh, the inch and a half by three inch rectangular tubing as well. You know, you'll see right here in a minute, uh, I, I'm taking my grinder and I'm, uh, I've got a flap disc right here. And you can see I'm going around with this Walter Surface technology. And right there, you see I, I sharpened the, um, the flap disc right there. There's about a half inch uh, uh, allowance that you can sharpen those and by rubbing them up on a, on a sharp surface. And that's what I was doing. Knocked it down and made it look like a, a brand new, look like and work like a brand new uh, flap disc. Great product. All right, so here we are. We're just finishing up right here with the dual shield flux core. This is a long continuous weld right here. Got it in one shot. Uh, hot, hot process. Uh, you definitely have to stay behind the heat on this one right here. And you can see that that slag just chips off really nice and smooth. There they are. All three columns uh, ended up being exactly the same, just like they should. Uh, everything worked out uh, really good. I'm glad to get those things off of my, off of my welding table, that's for sure. That was, uh, that was quite a project. So what we have left here are these uh, inch and a half by three inch uh, rectangular tubes. There's 15 pieces here. And uh, again... Uh, here's the beauty about, you know, a couple of videos back, back when I got my welding table, I had um, I had mentioned that I lined up my welding table and my old welding table, as you see right there, and my workbench, everything all at the same elevation in the event that I might have some long projects that come into the shop, which I wasn't anticipating. And yeah, right. Well, this one happened to come the very next week, but uh, it worked out really good. And, uh, you know, I was able to spread those things out across the, uh, the both welding tables and my workbench. So this is just some uh, two inch by inch and a half flat bar stock, eighth of an inch thick. These are the caps. And you, you, you take notice of those little strong hand corner 
uh, mags. Uh, you know, I, I purchased those at my uh, welding supply store. You know, I saw them on the shelf. I thought they were interesting. I might be able to use them someday. And uh, I got to say, they worked out pretty good. You know, Strong Hand puts out a pretty good product. I've got a, I've got several of their uh, um, mag squares plus those corner uh, mags right there. Pretty cool. Worked out pretty good. You can see I'm just doing the same thing, just, uh, uh, you know, grinding them down flat, uh, filling them in, making it look like a finished product. Now, since I had so many of these to do, I was trying to figure out a way to mass produce these things. And, you know, since I only got two of those uh, corner clamps, uh, I was just going along here and tack welding everything on, lining them all up, and then coming back and, and hitting them, uh, you know, one at a time, lining them up. It actually went pretty quick. Now the reason why I'm working on uh, my welding table and my and my workbench here rather than the welding table there is you can see I got the garage door down right there. It happened to be raining for about five straight days during this build, and uh, I wasn't able to uh, open up the garage door because I had to I had I would had to have extended those things out out the door out the garage door on my welding table. And you can see this is uh, the next day, and I I happen to have the door open here as I'm. Finish things, finishing things up. You know, when I first started uh, welding these end caps on, I thought it was going to take forever, but uh, you know what? I got used to it, and uh, it actually went fairly quick. You know, so that uh, worked out pretty good. They're all stacked up, and everything is ready to get over to the job site. This is the time lapse. I got a couple of different angles right here uh, of the installation. You can see that uh, the footings are in the ground. You can't really see those, but uh, uh, we've bolted everything in, got everything nice and square. I tacked on the top uh, trellis uh, section there and the bottom. Got everything double checked for square, and once everything was square, uh, then we just used spacers and string lines and uh, worked our way down the trellis and uh, welding everything. I, I welded everything as I went here. Both sides got everything completely done so I didn't have to come back. You know, it worked out really good. I had a lot of help that day. This whole thing really only took about four or five hours to complete from start to finish. You can see we just finished up there. We're covering it up here right now because there's another threat of rain coming in and we wanted to protect it a little bit uh, before the painters got there the following day. And this is just another angle of a time lapse from start to finish here. A little bit faster. You can see how things uh, uh, moved along really quick. You know, it was a great little project. I really enjoyed it. Uh, if you guys are interested in checking out uh, some of the contractor's uh, designs, you can do so at builtbynewkirk.com. Don't forget to check out my website at jimbosgrod.com for your torch lead holders and miscellaneous merchandise. Uh, follow us on Instagram. Check us out on Facebook. Thanks for watching. See you guys next week. See you next time on Jimbo's Garage.